been looking at this text for about, ever since Corey asked me to preach, it was about three months ago. And originally, I was looking at these 20 verses in chapter 5, but the longer I looked at it, I realized that this was just 25% of the story. That there's a story before it and two stories after. The story we're going to talk about today primarily is about the Gadarene demoniac. Now, that's a crazy man, if you want to know in simple terms. They wander around out in the tombs naked, hurting himself, breaking chains. But there's a story before this. It's a story about Jesus and the disciples were over in Galilee, and they decided, Jesus said, hey, let's get in the boat and go over across the sea. And so Jesus had a hard day, I suspect. And he gets in the stern of the boat and lays, lays down on a head on a pillow and goes to sleep. Now, it's a pretty good-sized little boat because there was at least a dozen disciples there. And these guys were pretty good fishermen. They'd been out there on that sea before. And all of a sudden, out in the middle of the lake, sea, whatever, great storm comes up. Boat starts pitching, bucking up and down. And they get scared. You know, I, I was up at Texoma with my brother one day over on the far Oklahoma side of the lake. And the wind came just right, right down the lake. And those swells at Texoma, oh, they were 12, 15 feet high. So high that if you were down in the middle of them, you couldn't see over them by a long shot. And we were in one of these, used to be one of these little old narrow, they're not like boats today. They were about fishing rig about that wide, just like a toothpick. And I said, Bill, how are we going to get home? And so he got down in one of the middle of one of the, between the, in the trough between two of the big waves and cut that thing wide open, and we, come acro we, came, we come across the lake, boy. <laughs> we got across to the south side of the lake, and I never was so glad to be on shore in my life because you couldn't see either way. I was like the dude in the back of that boat on the Sea of Galilee. I was said, hey, Lord, do you care if we perish? And he says, peace be still. And he calmed the seas. And you know, that brought to mind the text from Genesis 1, verse 2, where God is creating the world. And if we're good Methodist Trinitarians, we believe that Jesus and the Holy Spirit were present with God there at creation. So the Trinity, the power of God, took the chaos of the seas that was in the midst of between heaven and hell, the chaos that was there, and he calmed the sea. So in this story today, the Sea of Galilee has a storm, causes chaos between Galilee, which was kosher, good Jewish country, and the Decapolis, which was ruled by Philip of Macedonia, who was a good Gentile. But that don't make whether he's good or not. According to the Jews, he was unclean. The difference in the Sea of Galilee, the chaos between good, kosher, Gentile, bad, evil, unclean. And, that, and you have to, that's un, that's primary to the understanding of what this text is all about. But let me go on. Before you, after we get through reading these 20 verses, there's two more stories. At the end of this story with, about the crazy man is that they get in the boat again and they go back to Galilee. Jesus is going back and forth. He's gapping. He's bridging the gap. He becomes the bridge between kosher and unclean. And when he gets back, the guy rushes up to him and says, hey, my daughter's dying. In fact, she may already be dead. Come quickly, and you can save her. And so he starts up the road, and he hadn't gone very far till he stops. And he says, who touched me? The disciples, you know, hey, those streets and Galilee were very narrow. 
and there's a big crowd, all these groupies, you know, following Jesus. He said, who touched me? And it was a bunch of people touching him. But see, there's this woman. The story's all about her. She'd been sick with the flow of blood for 12 years and couldn't get over it. She'd been to soothsayers and doctors and Medicaid and Medicare and whatever else that existed in that day. And nobody could heal her. And she heard Jesus was coming. And she'd heard all the stories that you and I probably heard. And so she said, hey, if I just reach out, if I just reach out and touch the hem of his garment, maybe that'll do some good. So she stuck her hand between, I can imagine there's two guys here and Jesus is there. I can, she stuck her hand through there, touched his rope. And he healed her. Then the story goes on, and they're on the way over to Jairus' house, and he raises his daughter from the dead. Now, there are four things here, folks, that we're talking about. One is the elements. All of us have problem with the elements. Hey, I grew up in Wichita Falls, and that's Tornado Silly, Tornado Alley. You know, I've been as within a, less than half a mile of a tornado. I didn't like it. In fact, I buried people that were killed by them. We have tornadoes down here, but not like you do in Wichita Falls. And then all of us, the, the gathering, we're going to talk about that, but he's full of demons. And all of us have demons that run around in us. I said at second service, I got a demon and it's this. You know what that is? That's pushing away from the table. Now, I've lost 25 pounds. I got about 25 more. I got to lose. But uh, all I'm trying to say is that's, that's a demon. That's just one. Another thing is I like to put my foot on that gas pedal. <laughs> now, those are in insignificant, but there are some. All of us have got some demons. Paul said in Romans 3.23, all of us have sinned. And by the way, that's what demons are. Demons separate us not only from God, but from one another. And the theological term there is very simple, dear friend. It's called sin. Now, as I said in second service, we Methodist preachers don't like to talk about sin. <coughs> that upsets people because we're all so akin to it. But that's what the demons are, are sin. Then there is the problem of illness, the chaos of illness. And there's not a week that goes by, but what we hear, somebody has had a stroke, somebody has been diagnosed with cancer, or Alzheimer's, or some other, God forbid, terrible name. And that's chaos. Uh, last, not for last, Linda and I were over at Mama's Daughter's in Louisville, and that's a pretty good place you, to go to eat if you like home cooking food for not too much money. But that's where preachers can eat, I guess. But anyway, <coughs> anyway uh, and I was sitting there, and I looked up and hear this brother coming out with a cane, and then the next thing I knew, he was falling on his face. And he cut a great big gash up here on his head. And the little old waitress was there. Man, she come on well at the seams. She got so upset and rattled and, call that one more, call that one more. And, well, they did. And I said, hey, why don't you get a wet rag, a clean, wet, cold towel, and get it wet and go over and, and put it on that thing and that gash and stop it bleeding. I said, why don't you go get a wet towel? Finally, nobody did, so I got one. By the time I got back, somebody else already got one there, but hey, they had two. And uh, 911 comes and takes the brother. But there was a family there with him. And that was chaos for them in that moment. It was a tough time. You know, Joe didn't tell you this, 
but he has a sister that lives up close to Colorado Springs. I saw on my internet this week two pictures. One was a picture of the flames. And I love the pine trees of Colorado. I got, in fact, I'm probably going to go back again in October. I just had to go up there and soak up the beauty of God's creation. Catch a few fish maybe, but that's, 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 that's a serendipity. But uh, There was a picture of flames, but then there was another picture of a cul-de-sac where the flames had come. Twelve or thirteen images, outlines of where houses had been. There wasn't anything sticking up. There was foundation and piles of ashes around. The houses were completely gone. Everything that was in them that was precious and sacred to those families was gone. Keepsakes, pictures, furniture that they'd sweat blood and tears to pay for. It's all gone. Now, folks, that's chaos. That's chaos. Well, let's listen to this story. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when Jesus had come out of the boat, immediately there met him on the tombs, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had been dwelling amongst the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he'd often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always at night and day he was out in the mountains and in the tombs crying out like an animal. That's not in there, but that's, what, that's in, the, in the Aramaic, that's where it is. And cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not tort me. In other words, get out of here, Jesus. I don't want to have anything to do with you. For he said to him, that is Jesus talking to the man, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, I don't know whether you're familiar with Roman army jargon or not, but a legion is 6,028 men and the auxiliary people that go along with it. I don't think that's what the text is talking about. I think it's talking about a battalion. And a battalion in Roman army was 2,000. So that fits the scripture here. 2,000. Now listen. <clears throat> and he also begged him earnestly that he, that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send to us the swine, send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There's about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it had happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. And then they began to plead with him, Depart from the region. They were afraid of him, so they said, hey, man, get out of here. And when he got, in, and then, and when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And so the man departed and to began to de proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him, and all marveled. 
Dear friends, the good news today is that Jesus is the bridge. I don't care what you call it. Jesus is the bridge to shalom, to peace, to joy, to forgiveness, to wholeness. And Jesus is empowered in your life by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Over and over and over again in New Testament, it is the witness and the empowering and the receiving of the Holy Spirit that enables people to be more than they are, to live with, in, and through, and beyond all kinds of chaos. Does that mean that chaos is going to stop? I don't think so. Chaos is going to continue to come. Chaos is a part of our lives. And as chaos comes, we're in immediately in the need of a bridge to move us from where we have been through the chaos, over the chaos, by the chaos, to the peace of God that gives us to live and be productive in another day. And that's what this is all about. Jesus calmed the sea. Jesus drove the demons out. Jesus healed the woman. Jesus raised Jarius' daughter from the dead. Any of you ever had any of those problems? I suspect so. I suspect so. All of us, none of us, excuse me, none of us are immune. If, if there was a, if it was a hypodermic shot that we could get here at the church, we'd, just all, we'd all bend over and say, hey, hit us. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not very nice. But take a shot. Take a pill. A Holy Spirit pill. Hey, Joe, we could make we could do all right with that. It's not there. It's in this precious book. As we stay in it and allow God to speak to us, to heal us, to bridge us over the troubled waters. We're going to hear that song in a minute. But you see, all of this comes down to the last two verses in this text today. What happened to this guy? Well, he was demon-possessed. He had 2,000 demons. I hope none of us have that many. He had so many demons in his life that he was totally not human because it is the power and presence of God's Spirit that makes us human. And he was so demon-possessed that God's Spirit was nowhere to be found. He was totally gone, totally lost, totally deprived. And God came and replaced the demons with His Spirit. And there He sat, clothed, a new man in His right mind. Don't you think, do you think He was grateful to Jesus? Sure he was. Sure he was. He was so grateful that he wanted to become a disciple. He got so turned on by what God had done for him, he wanted to become one of the twelve. He wanted to get in the boat with Jesus to go back to Galilee. He wanted to be so close that he was surrounded with Jesus' love and presence all the time. How like us is this man? We find something that we like, that turns us on, that's spiritually enlivening to us. We go on a retreat, go on a lay witness mission. We go, oh, that's, boy, that's an old, we go on a walk to Emmaus or do disciple or something. And these are all wonderful programs. And we get up on that mountaintop and we want to stay there. The man, the gathering, had gotten to the mountaintop. And he wanted to get in the boat with Jesus, like you and me. It's safe there because Jesus is there. But what did Jesus say? Uh-uh. 
No way, man. No way. Go home. Go home. Tell your friends what God has done for you, how he's had compassion on you, how he took you when you were completely depraved, completely lost to sin, and made you a new person. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to bless these elements. And everybody here is invited. I don't, you know, whether you're, I don't know who you are. There's not many of you here that were here whenever I was here. Thank God, you know, we've grown. But I don't, whether you remember this church or not, you're invited to come to this table. Receive of these elements. Receive the, the physical embodiment of God's Holy Spirit into your bodies. Now, we come and we kneel, and God's presence and grace flow over us, and we get up, go back to our place. Now, what happens? Do we get in the boat with Jesus? Do we go home and get in our Bibles? And hey, that's all right. That's great. That's wonderful. We sit in our cubicle at home and pray and study. That's wonderful. But what did Jesus say? He said, go and tell and live what's happened to you. You see, Joe and Liz, Liz and Corey and all the staff, they're wonderful. We're so blessed to have them here to give us leadership. But folks, they're not the church. You're the church. You're the church. And if the church is going to be the church, then Jesus is saying to us, when you get up from that table, when you've been empowered, when you've been, imp when you've been forgiven, when you've been healed, when there's bridging come into your life, hey, it's time to get up and get out and go and tell what God has done for you. Let's assume that you come today and you've got this 20-ton element 10-ton elephant riding around on your back. I don't know what it is. It could be any of those four things or more. And God says, hey, come out. You're forgiven. You're healed. You're made whole. And you get up, and the elephant's gone. And you can walk straight and not have any fear. Throw your shoulders back and say, hey, I'm a new person. I'm not held down by the chains. I'm not bound in the tomb of sin and degradation. I'm made a whole person. What do you do about it? You go out and tell somebody. You go out and share with somebody that you found the bridge. The bridge to where from where you were, lost and alone and hurting and crying and suffering over the loss of a loved one, suffering over the fact that somebody said, hey, a friend's going to die pretty soon because he's got cancer. Are you afraid that something's going to happen to your life? And now I'm not afraid anymore. You see, when you get up from that table, that can be the result. And the result calls for a response. And the response, the response is that you and I live in a way 
that somebody else can find a bridge over their troubled waters. Thank you for joining us today. For more information, please visit our website, argyleumc.org, or contact our office at 940-464-1333. Now, may the grace, mercy, and peace of God be with you. Amen.